All right, uh, good morning. Uh, John Marvin, uh, Yakima Nation Fisheries, Yakima Klickitat Fisheries Project, uh, working on habitat restoration in the Yakima Basin off reservation. Uh, so today I'm presenting uh, Titan River Restoration, site number four. Um, the design for this project was previously funded uh, under Project 19-1447 um, that we recently com uh, completed the designs in 2022. Um, we had some uh, pandemic basically uh, slowed stuff down, but uh, we do have some uh, final designs to share with you today. So advance, okay, it's not advancing, awesome. Might have to shoot. There Is PowerPoint go. your active window? What's that? Is PowerPoint your active window? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Let me uh, close some other stuff here. Oh, I guess I can try the uh, presentation mode again, see if it advances. Okay, there we go. Uh, all right, Titan River uh, below Titan Dam. Uh, this map shows the confluence of the Natchez and the Titan. So the project reaches about between River Mile 4.3 and 4.8. Um, so this uh, project is to uh, restore habitat uh, for ESA listed steelhead, which uh, the Titan has all life uh, stages of. So the Titan River, uh, downstream of Rimrock Dam, uh, dams do uh, bad stuff to rivers. Um, so we have the Titan Dam, uh, historic uh, floodplain uh, riparian forest thinning and the construction of State Route 12. So dams, uh, you know, messes with the flow regime, upside down hydrography, uh, the flip-flop for irrigation. Um, so this gets turned on in September. Um, and dams, you know, cut off sediment, uh, which uh, eventually causes channel incision and lots of bad stuff. Um, so it's kind of a map here of the of what's above the, uh, the dam and what's below the dam. So the lower reach below the dam has some limited uh, tributary inputs, uh, both water and sediment, uh, contributing to the uh, channel incision. And there we go. Uh, so this is kind of similar to another project that was uh, implemented by KCT up on the Cleallum River, just down from Cleallum Dam. Uh, pretty much similar uh, existing conditions before the project, and the project has been, from what I know, uh, pretty successful, opening up a lot of side channel habitat and, um, yeah. So just uh, some tides and stuff. So part of the wood clearing, uh, there's you know some historic pictures of you know cutting down the trees, uh, loss of uh, spawning gravels and a loss of wood inputs, uh, both from the clearing and uh, SR12. So here's kind of a lidar image showing the SR12 cutting right through the floodplain of the Titan. So just a summary, just kind of the purpose and need for the project, uh, some channel confinement lack of spawning gravels and sediments, lack of wood supply, uh, flow regulation. Um, so that's a disconnection from its historic floodplain. Uh, the sediment in the Titan is very coarse. Um, it's created much more simple, dominated mostly single uh, channel, um, lacking pools, uh, cover, and suitable substrate for spawning. Um, so the Titan was mostly, it's not written off it's, as if, I guess in some triage. Uh, so it's not uh, adequately recognized in the recovery plan um, just because it was written in 2009. Um, but the Yakima Nation YKFP and uh, Fish and Wildlife uh, conducted the VSP, the Viable Salmonid Population Studies. Um, just tracking steelhead and trying to figure out where they're spawning and, and hopefully trying to figure out why. So the Titan actually surprised uh, a lot of people um, that there were so many spawners uh, utilizing the Titan. Um, so this is kind of a map of the Natchez and the locations of um, spawning adults. Um, and you can see in the uh, 
chart on the right there that the Titan actually has a pretty significant uh, component of the populations for steelhead in the Natchez. Um, it's kind of a more spread out of uh, in the Titan and, and where the reds were found in the adults, um, mostly in the lower six miles or so, um, but uh, fairly well distributed through the lower Titan. So based on that, uh, Chris Fredrickson was like, hey, why aren't you guys uh, doing some work in the Titan? And we're like, oof, why we didn't know. <laughs> So we, uh, in 2016, uh, did an assessment of habitat restoration uh, opportunities uh, in the lower Titan, mostly on the uh, DFW Oak Creek uh, wildlife area. Um, so this was uh, pretty illuminating, um, the assessment. So it identified 13 uh, restoration opportunities um, throughout that lower six miles. Um, and then seven were kind of uh, singled out for some further analysis. Um, so if the assessment was completed or uh, implemented in whole, uh, it could uh, reconnect over three miles of side channels um, and you know, different uh, restoration uh, tools, um, some either wood and rock structures, um, accessing side channels, um, riparian restoration, um, and some uh, restoring uh, a potentially up to 35 acres of floodplain re-engagement. So here's kind of a map of the assessment and where the um, restoration opportunities were identified. It's kind of a more simplified map. Um, so this is for site number four, um, as you can see on the map here. And site number four was identified uh, as the number one or the highest restoration opportunity that would provide for the greatest uplift uh, between all uh, 13 identified restoration sites. So this was the conceptual uh, from the assessment. Um, so in 2019, when uh, I presented to the board uh, for design funding um, through the, the grant process. Uh, it was to reduce costs. Um, we decided to go with uh, a single channel inlet uh, as opposed to the three that were identified in the uh, assessment. So there's just kind of an aerial view of the project reach and you can kind of see the Relic side channel that kind of hugs the uh, the basalt cliffs and the uplands, um, kind of to the southeast. So here's a little uh, some lidar of the site. Um, you can also see that that side channel that uh, is proposed to re-engage. So uh, the seven that were identified for further analysis. Uh, so we had uh, some habitat suitability index. Uh, analysis for those seven um, to show you know some existing conditions and then what some of the proposed conditions would look like based on the conceptual recommendations. So just some uh, examples and these are all uh, in the assessment which is uh, in PRISM uh, along with uh, the some of the other documents that are part of this uh, proposal. So uh, this, so the restoration, so they were looking for implementation funds to implement the designs uh, for improving steelhead spawning and rearing in the Titan. Um, by raising the water surface elevation and uh, activating a side channel that is no longer uh, activated. Um, so uh, the objectives of increasing spawning and rearing habitat, uh, perennial side channel length um, and wetted area for off channel habitat uh, increasing uh, finer uh, substrates for spawning steelhead and uh, increasing shade and cover for the in the, the riparian area for the new channel, um, increasing floodplain connectivity and uh, increasing floodplain wetland access. So the project will provide an increase of over 2,200 feet of new side channel habitat. Um, it will take about 880 feet of excavation to uh, access this side channel. 
Uh, a boulder riffle will be constructed in the main channel of the Titan uh, to pick up the water surface and put water into this side channel. We'll also include an engineered apex uh, jam at the side channel inlet. Uh, the gravels for the, from the excavation of the new side channel will be uh, sifted for uh, the appropriate size gravels and will be added as a nourishment bar uh, along the main stem titan. Um, and so this will uh, increase of almost five acres of floodplain inundation um, and uh, 2.9 acres of riparian re or vegetation um, where the, the new channel will be cut is uh, pretty dry. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, riparian vegetation there. Once it gets into the what was the old side channel, there are uh, some standing water wetlands and it is rather uh, well vegetated with a mature uh, riparian forest. Um, uh, there is a the Titan Nature Trail does run through the project site um, and in working with uh, Fish and Wildlife, who is the uh, property manager. Um, looked at different options of getting the trail uh, through there, but it seemed most appropriate to do a trail realignment to keep the trail out of the new site channel. So as part of the design package, uh, there was a, a risk assessment and flood hazard report. Um, looking at both uh, hazards to the highway, um, to the trail, um, Floodplain regulations, there's no FEMA floodway here, so we don't have to deal with uh, rise in the floodplain. And also looked at the uh, recreational uh, rafting. Uh, this is pretty, the Titan is popular uh, during flip-flop in the September when they turn this on. Uh, most of the guided uh, rafting occurs upstream. Um, but of course, I'm sure there are some recreational rafters that do uh, float to this. So the uh, boulder riffle has been designed uh, to allow for safe rafting passage. Um, and of course, the apex structure is on the bank, so it could be easily uh, avoided. Um, and it was consistent with, uh, oh, DNR has some kind of checklist for uh, determining uh, safety uh, and rafters. And there's a basis of design report. Uh, I would encourage you to, to look at, look through it. Uh, it's attached in the, the prism for the application file. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the design um, drawings and uh, products from the design. So I'm gonna go kind of quick because we're kind of short on time. Um, so I encourage you to, to read through it. So this is kind of an overview of the project where the side channel will be excavated to access the uh, existing uh, side channel that's no longer available. The boulder riffle, uh, sediment nourishment bar, um, where the leftover spoils will be used. Uh, some will be used in the boulder or the uh, apex jam. Um, and then of course the, the appropriate size gravels in the nourishment bar and everything else will get used in the uplands. And just uh, so these are the project components, the uh, boulder riffle, log jam, excavation, nourishment bar, and trail realignment. And then some of the modeling from the design for existing and proposed at different uh, flow regimes. Um, spend a lot of time on these. Um, so we did uh, get some comments uh, regarding splitting of flows and uh, low flows. Um, and so we did some additional um, modeling and looking at what the side, how the side channel would, would function at the, the variety of flows. Some more existing proposed with the uh, flood inundation and side channel length. And as uh, part of that low flow analysis, uh, so Yakima Nation YKP is uh, working with YTID for their proposed uh, whatever they need to do with the canal. Um, so with the proposal of putting some of the water back in the river and looking at the habitat uplift, but not, uh, not incorporating what would happen with uh, YTID. This is just with uh, existing flows, but using the model that they're, they're using to assess the, uh, the YTID uh, proposal. And so it shows a 
habitat uplift. So this is kind of an analysis uh, using different size classes uh, for Omicus, um, you know, with their different uh, flow and depth requirements, and then the overall uh, habitat uplift based on the project. And so just kind of some of the design uh, report components. So the access staging um, where the project is located. The John, can we can we go back and just stare at that habitat uplift a couple seconds more? Because that was kind of cool and new. Do you mind? Yeah. So there, so uh, results are considered provisional. So uh, Shuba and uh, Pandit and Chris Fredrickson from YKFP uh, are working with uh, consultants from YTAD for this model, and they're running it for the entire uh, Titan River. Um, yeah, thank you. That's that's a neat approach. And just tell me if you want me to stop at any of these to, okay, this is kind of a good one. So this shows uh, the Boulder Riffle uh, Apex Jam, uh, where the new side channel will get cut to access the existing off-channel habitat, uh, access and uh, trail realignment, along with the uh, sediment nourishment bar. And there's some of the uh, uh, designs for the trail realignment. Uh, the, we couldn't get the trail out of the 100-year uh, flows, but um, it should be pretty dry for uh, flows below 100. And then so some cross sections, uh, both the boulder riffle and um, trail and side channel excavation. So a schematic of the uh, apex jam um, with uh, boulders used as ballast, so and then built into the bank. So no no other anchoring is proposed other than the the and then backfill with uh, sediment or material from the channel excavation. Michael, I don't have a clock in front of me. Am I doing okay on time here? But you have nine minutes left for Q and A. Okay. I'll just kind of blow through these. Uh, here's the kind of uh, revegetation plan uh, focused on the new side channel. Uh, like I said, the, the existing side channel is well vegetated with the mature riparian forest. And the construction cost estimate. It did go up uh, from our uh, pre-proposal, uh, just the, you know, the consultants looking at existing costs uh, that have increase substantially due to whatever is going on in the world. Um, but it is actually consistent with the assessment that was produced in 2016, uh, estimated a range between seven and, and nine for implementation. So it's consistent with that. All right. I guess I would uh, preface that I, uh, I don't know, Sean, if you want to speak to it. Um, so we, I, uh, Sean did give me a, the call this morning to uh, talk about uh, his concerns uh, with uh, low flow and splitting flows uh, in the winter. Winter low flows are an issue um, in the Titan due to the dam um, and storing water for irrigation. Yeah, John, I, I guess I could. Um, yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of potential benefits of, of the project. Um, the, the concern that I voiced was, given the way that the flows are regulated in the Tiatin, that that the extreme low flows happen in the in the winter time, and uh, uh, my view is that uh, the the project would be much more beneficial if if we had a seasonal side connection or side channel connection uh, rather than a year round connection. Uh, 
because there's a there's a risk at very low flows of, of splitting the flow and making uh, sort of freezing problems problems worse. But I, I don't want to dominate this with you know just just my view of it. This is this is your your time to to talk about the project. Okay. Uh, do any other members of the panel have questions? I have a question for Bob. Uh, will the trails moved away from the river? Will the entire area still be accessible to bushwhackers who wade across the new side channel? Yes. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Uh, are there any other questions, though, that people would like to put out? Uh, so should we circle back to Sean's question? And we have about six minutes remaining. Um, I don't. Know, I guess that's up to Sean if you want to discuss it more. Um, I, you know, I think we're going to have at least some more discussion, uh, you know, through our permitting process um, and our uh, ESA compliance. Um, you know, I, I did. I also spoke with. Chris Fredrickson, I think Sean had a conversation with him earlier too, just kind of talking about the issue. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a valid and important issue that needs to be considered. Um, we do have some kind of more questions and I, I think it, it does warrant some more um, discussion. I'm not sure we can squeeze it into uh, six minutes, but <laughs> there, there's definitely more uh, just some discussion to be had and, and whether whether we go with a, a perennial side channel or a, a intermittent side channel and, and what flows are, are, are appropriate for that uh, division. Great. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Um, if not, we could take a little bit of a longer break and then get started back with Swat Creek at 1110. All right, well, uh, thank you very much for the time today. Um, and uh, you all have a good day. Thanks a lot, John. See you soon. Right. right. Bye. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, since we're just a tiny bit ahead of schedule, uh, which is always nice as a facilitator, uh, we'll take our break now and then come back together at 1110. And Justin Beasel will be joining us from Trout Unlimited. <laughs>